Today we are going to talk about three things that I wish that I had known before I started law school. Number one, grading. In undergrad, you would have an idea of what your grade was as the semester progressed. Typically, the process was something along the lines of you'd go to class, you'd take notes during the lecture portion, there may be a lab portion, but then you would ultimately have a homework assignment that you'd take home with you. You would then fill out that uh, homework assignment, answer whatever you got to do, whatever essay it is, whatever worksheet it is. You'd bring it in by the deadline, turn it in, and wash, rinse, repeat on usually a weekly basis. Not so with law school. In law school, the final is everything. There may be some points here or there thrown about for participation, uh, attendance, and for things such as the midterm. But when I say that the final is everything, I mean that. I mean that 90% of your grade, typically, 90% of your grade will be in the uh, final exam. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know that there'll be a separate video on what the final exam is like, but to give you kind of a gist of what a final exam looks like in law school, most professors require a closed book, essay style uh, final exam. That means that they give you a fact pattern and then they expect you to answer one question with that fact pattern. What are plaintiff's rights against defendant? But what they don't tell you in that kind of exam is that you have to also answer what defenses would defendant have against plaintiff's arguments. So you have to go back and forth on that. Also, you typically have one question for every unit that the class is worth. So if you have a three unit class, you have three questions that you have to answer. And before you think that that's an easy thing to do, there's a reason why they give you an hour to answer each one. First 15 minutes might be taking notes down and reading the, the exam question. So more like 45 minutes, but the truth is you're gonna have very little time and you never will have enough time. Number two time investment. In law school, your classes will typically be between two to three hours each week. Um, usually the number of hours is equal to the number of units you're taking. So if you're in a three unit class, you typically will have three hours of lecture. And it is mostly lecture. You typically are going to be having about 10 units to 15 units of uh, classes, depending on the law school you go to and the number of years your program is. Every minute counts. Additionally, before, before you actually go to class, you have to have read the reading for that week. This isn't something where you can make up for it like you can in undergrad. You actually need to be fully ready and prepared for class. You have to have read the cases. You have to have briefed the cases. And we will go over how to brief cases later, but in this video, we're not gonna be covering that. More importantly, you have to know the time requirements for your classes and preparation for it. Every hour of class is going to require about two to maybe even three hours of preparation prior to class. That means in a three hour class, I'm going to be looking at between six and nine hours of reading and briefing cases and preparing my questions for class. That's a lot. If you're taking 10 units or 11 units like I am currently, then you're actually going to be looking at between, let's say you're taking a full 10 units. You're looking at 20 to 30 hours a week in just reading and preparing. In addition to the preparation that you actually have to put in prior to class, that 20 to 30 hours for a 10 unit semester, and not counting the time you actually have to spend 
in class, which by the way is for a 10 unit semester, probably about 10 hours. So now you see your, your time is already going from 20 to 30 actually to 30 to 40 hours. You still need an additional hour. For each class, you need to take at least one hour, at least one hour to consolidate your notes outline the rules that you have learned, and review. So, for myself, I'm taking four units this semester, 11 units. So ideally, my situation would require me to have a minimum of 22 hours of study time. I have my 11 hours of class time. And then I have another, because it's four classes that come to that, four hours on top of that, to be able to consolidate my notes, to be able to uh, update my outline and review my outline. So we're looking at, for my 11 units, for example, the bare minimum, bare minimum, I'm looking at 33 plus four. So I'm looking at 37. So at the bare minimum, for somebody that is attending law school and has 11 units like I do, you're looking at about 37 hours per week. That's pretty close to a full-time job. And there's a reason for that, because it is. You have to consider the fact that you are going to be working full-time as a student. And no, they don't pay you. I wish. You're not going to get paid for it. In fact, you're going to pay out the wazoo for the privilege of working your butt off. Number three, it is not about the law. When you're in law school, you are going to learn what is called black letter law. Black letter law is not necessarily the law that is written down in the code. It is actually more of a consolidation of all of the decisions that have been made on a particular issue by the courts in the English common law tradition over the past few centuries. When you are learning black letter law, what you are actually learning is a way of thinking. It's almost like a new language that you have to learn to be able to speak. And it's important that you realize this because when you go to answer your exam, as I mentioned earlier, you need to be able to speak the language of the exam. And if you don't speak the language that you are learning, you can't answer the exam questions, as I was mentioning earlier, because you don't know the language to write the answer in. You're a translator. That's what we do in law. We translate everyday actions into a language that we call the law. While I call it a language, it isn't necessarily truly a language. It's more like a structure, a way of thinking, a construct that you actually operate in. So it's important to recognize that what you're really doing is you're learning to think in a different way. That's what law school does. It teaches you to think in a different way. So when you go to law school, everything you know about the law, maybe you're a paralegal, maybe you worked as an officer of the law as a cop, or maybe you studied criminology in your undergrad, forget it all. Not literally. Because while that knowledge is valuable, when you're studying the law, you have to accept that the law is going to be in its own little vacuum, its own little bubble, you're learning the basic principles that such laws, if they exist in your state, are based on. Every state has some form of battery. Every state has some form of governmental immunity. You have to understand these things and understand what, how they apply and when they apply. That's what you're learning. You're learning about how to think about things through the filter of the law. It is a lens that you have to look at facts through. It doesn't matter what you already know. It doesn't matter what you've done before. It doesn't matter if you know for a fact that the law of the state that you live in is different than the law that you are learning in law school. Do not disregard it. That was something I had to learn. And I wish I had known that earlier on. Check your knowledge at the door. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, go ahead and make sure that I know that. Click the like button down below. If you are interested in law school or you are currently a law school student, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. 
I do plan on providing further videos like this where I can help individuals make that decision as to whether or not law school is right for them. And those that are already in law school, I do plan to not only provide tips, techniques, and lessons learned thus far, but also I do want to discuss the actual black letter law and analyze that. So I'm going to be doing some of those things. Uh, hopefully the stuff I do will help other people not make the mistakes that I made earlier on and that way they can flourish. If you have any questions or comments regarding this or any other topics that I may be covering in this channel, feel free to go ahead and make a comment below or PM me and I can see what I can do. I'm happy to take suggestions and I do plan on growing this channel to be able to help as many people as possible. Until then, Thank you very much and have a great day.